family. Let me rant right quick before I get started in my video. Because from where I stand, there's a cycle of hatred that surrounds us and the world. I mean, let's face it. Race, creed, color, religion, land, wealth, women. You idiots will find any reason to start a fight. I mean, the things that you hold value to just fundamentally would not exist without a negative counterpart. And I guess y'all don't seem to understand that. You don't understand that there is no love without hate. No strength without weakness. No light without darkness. You dig me? You get where I'm going with that? The number one would not exist without the negative number one. And our oppressors understand that and they use that to keep us fighting against each other. The dialectic systems, alright? It means your childish desire to be successful or to be a winner means that you also desire that there be failures and losers. Understand that? Your desire to be a winner makes sure that there's also losers out there. Now, and I understand that these things exist in nature. It just disgusts me to see that cycle ravaging my community and the world to that extent. I mean, even our intellects cause more division within the community than any outside source ever could. You seek to be somebody in a system where you are nobody. I don't care if you're white, black, yellow, or purple. You seek to be somebody in the system where you are nobody. All right? Go up and get a soul. So, my question to all of these groups, these Christians and Moors and African Americans and anybody who identifies themselves by the ideal that was created by an outsider, answer this question for me. How will you confront this hatred to create a world of peace? Understanding that peace and hate coexist, they gotta go together. All right. So how will you confront this war to bring about peace? You understand me? Think about that for a second. I'll tell you about myself. To get rid of all of that, I don't follow any of the ideals that you guys have. And that's why I can say what I want to say. All right. I don't have a nation. I'm not aligned with any nation. I'm not aligned with any group. I don't have a name. I'm not proud of any of that. I'm not proud to be black. Proud to be an American. Or whatever else y'all proud of. Remember the old folks used to say. Pride is a tool of the devil. By knowing what you proud of. I can expose your vulnerability. That's war. You dig me? So that ran is over right quick. We're going to get into the video. The video called the Negro Family Tree. All right. So when I'm about to show all of the black people. All of, all of my black viewers. Especially my indigenous black Americans. Is the Negro family from around the world. And I got one more thing to say. Anybody who turn their back on their family is worse than scum. You dig? Peace out, homies. Yo, yo, what's up, family? It's your dog, the Ultra Melanite, coming to you live from Charleston, South Carolina, a.k.a. the Holy City, home of the Geechee Gala culture. And there seems to be a lot of confusion around who black people really are, you dig? They say, y'all just West African. Y'all ain't Egyptian. Y'all ain't Asian, Australian, American. Y'all just West African, you dig me? So, I go, all of that rhetoric sparked me to do the Negro family tree in order to expose the diabolical racism of divide and conquer. We gonna unite and love each other. You dig what I'm saying? Remember, there are only three races, white, black, and mongoloid, and only one race indigenous to the earth. So let's take a look at our brothers and sisters on the screen. What part of the world do you think they are from? Do you think they are from Africa? If you do, then you dumb, deaf, and blind, and you probably think they all came from monkeys, too. You dig? Let me explain. Let's start with my brothers in Fiji. How did people, black people, get in Fiji? How did they get in Melanesia, Tasmania, 60,000 years ago? Why is their phenotype a little bit different than some groups in Africa? Why is their phenotype similar to some groups in Africa? All right. The idiots would have you believe that they trans they transversed the ocean 60,000 years ago to reach and populate these places. That's retarded. I say that they were created in these places along with the unique plants and animals that exist there. These people are Negro. Let's take a look at the Kai Kolo on the screen right now. What are the unique features about the Kai Kolo? 
Let's look at that big old afro. You know, not too much people in the world grow afros like that. You know, when I first saw these people, I said, yeah, they, they hair look like broccoli to me. That look like stalks of broccoli to me. You know, big, thick, beautiful afros. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> That's one of the unique things about the Kai Kolo. Another thing that struck me about them since I deal with grandma was the word Kai. If you watch Dragon Ball Z, you, you know that they're famous King, King Kai. You know, and you know that's a, a big word in Hawaiian culture and Japanese culture. So being that these people are older than both of these other cultures that I mentioned, the Japanese and the Hawaiian, being that the Fijians, the, the Melanesians are older, I would say that the word probably originated with those people and then extended into the Asian people as they invaded and ended up taking over the cultures. All right. From here, let's take a look at our brothers in Tasmania, indigenous to Tasmania. Let's take a look at our Polynesian brothers, our aboriginal brothers in Australia, our indigenous brothers in Madagascar, all of the oceanic Negroes, all of these people that I just named from Melanesia to Polynesia, Australia, Tasmania, Madagascar, all of these people are y'all cousins. These are the oceanic Negroes. You dig what I'm saying? <clears throat> From here, let's go take a trip and visit our cousins in the Philippines, the indigenous Negrito, who was a victim of genocide, land stolen just like us. Their blood is on our hands now since we don't even remember them. All right? Science said these places and islands were populated long before there was a Mongol or Asian counterpart. They did not come from Africa, but they were created on the mainlands in Asia and then populated the islands, you know, as they expanded. All right. More recently, they were exterminated and replaced with a Mongol type or a Mestizo type. Uh, study the Pacific slave trade if you want to get more on that subject. I did a video called uh, Mexican People Are Really Chinese that goes into in depth on the Asian slave trade. National Geographic states that a skull dating back 63,000 years found in Laos further proves that blacks populated all of Asia prior to the birth of the Mongol. This is why Oceanic Negroid uh, DNA is so close to the DNA of the people in, 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 from the Andaman. It's not that the Andaman people were Oceanic Negroes and backward migrated into India. It's because they were closely lumped together uh, in, in their conception. You dig what I'm saying? Which would make their DNA strands very, very close to each other. Not a backwards migration like some scientists would suggest. All right, from the Philippines and Laos, let's uh, visit our indigenous Negrito brothers in India. Who's the oldest group of people in South Asia and India? That would be the Andaman. Now, the Sentinelese probably are just as old, but they won't allow any genetic testing as they don't deal with the outside world with, and with good reason. All right. So the Andaman people are a group of indigenous Negritos who are not from Africa. There is no evidence of these people ever being in Africa. They have their own names, they, their own languages, their own cultures. All right. They are indigenous to Asia. From them, during the hybridization process, they formed the group of people. They formed the basis for the group of people we now know as the Dravidians, the Vedics, or the Untouchables. Then the British came in later on and divided these two groups of people, took the sides with the Dravidians, and ended up exterminating and pushing the Andamese and Sentinelese off into the islands where they became isolated. All right. After they did that, the Dravidians and the Vedics with more of the indigenous blood were labeled as untouchable and they weren't, labeled, weren't able to have kids anymore or be a part of the society anymore, thereby, therefore, whitewashing the uh, Indian society. All right. So these are your Asiatic black people, the people in Laos. The people in the Philippines, the people all in all of South Asia, Vietnam, India, this is their roots. It is indigenous Negrito. So this is your second category of the black man that I'm giving y'all today, which is the Asiatic black man. From here, let's ride out to Central Africa and take a look at our cousins, the red man, the indigenous Negrillo, the pygmy in Central Africa. All right. He says that he is red because God molded him from the red clay. If you ever get a chance, read the creation epics from uh, from Central Africa. I find them very interesting. All right. These are cousins, the indigenous Negrillo 
You dig me? They got their own language. They name their children their own names. They eat their own foods, their own culture. They're their own people. From there, let's travel a little further south and take a look at their more modern, so to say, counterpart, the, the Bantu and the Zulu. You dig what he's saying? Take a good look at the Zulu. I'm going to show a representation of the Zulu because they were so, such a strong and fascinating empire. Notice the headdress. Notice the shields, the spears. You dig what he's saying? What does that remind you of? Looks very similar to the culture right here in America, all right? These are our cousins. You don't find this culture in any Mongoloid group. You don't find this culture in any European group. This culture is indigenous to Negroes. You understand me, all right? So take a look. These are our cousins, you dig what he's saying? From here, let's go back north and take a look at our family over here in Nap the Playa in the land of Yam. All right. Nap the Playa is a place in Nubia that once was a thriving city. You dig what he's saying? And somehow turned to a desert. You dig? From my understanding, their culture is very similar to the culture in Chad in Central Africa and then later evolved into the culture that we now know of as the Egyptian culture. What's interesting about Nap the Playa is they had a lot of the similar things that we had. They just now extinct. You know, they had buffalo. They had antelope, you know, he's saying, and so on and so forth. You know, all of them animals now are now extinct. And the people, like us, are just a remnant, you know. This is what a modern Egyptian looks like. Look at him. This man is not indigenous to Egypt. He is an invader to Egypt. He, is, he replaced the original man. They mix with the indigenous man create a mixed man and replace the indigenous man and push them into sub-Saharan Africa. The same story that we got here. You dig what he's saying? So, since I keep saying the same story we got here, let's go last but not least. And Well, I just want to say these are the African group of Negroids. The groups that I just named are the African Negroids. They are indigenous to Africa. They evolved from the Negrillo. You dig what he's saying? All right. So last but not least, let's go ahead and drop some science about the indigenous American Negro. You dig? Take a look at our American Negrito brothers and sisters. Keep in mind while y'all looking at these people that we were always here, but we were nearly destroyed by over 500 years of war. You dig? Nonetheless, we are not a product of African slaves. We have our own culture, language, food, dance, etc. We are our own people and rightful inhabitants of this land, even though most of y'all think we just West Africans. But that's false. We are the American Negro, our own group. Each culture has its defining points. And one very important way of identifying a culture is its names. For example, if I say I on the phone with Juan or Raul or Jose, y'all going to say, well, yeah, you on the phone with a Hispanic person, right? Well, if I say I on the phone with Ronisha or Taikisha or Tamanika, you know, Tierra, then y'all going to say, yeah, you on the phone with a black American. If we are descendant from the Africans, why don't we have African names? You understand me? Y'all say, well, no, y'all just made them names up. Man, that's BS. That's total BS. Nobody sits in their house and just thinks of a name to make up for their child. Those names were passed down and obviously indigenous to this one locale. Since you're not going to find a person named Ronisha, Taikisha, or Tamanika living in West Africa. Even though y'all say we just West Africans. Right. You know what I'm saying? What continent would you say a person is, what country would you say a person is from if I say I on the phone with them and they got that name? You're going to say that represents a black woman in America. Names that society have deemed to be ghetto to the point where we, you are less likely to get a job if you have a name like that. To the point where a lot of people won't name their children these ghetto names anymore. And they start to name their children names that are deemed to be more acceptable by modern society. You know, that's another way of getting rid of our culture. Go ahead and name your children the ghetto names. You know, let's, let's be productive by our, our culture and, and our goals, you dig? Our work ethic. So these are your American Negroes. The Toltec, the Olmec, the Aztec. The Mayan, the Incan, the Edawan, the Yuchi, and many, many, many more. All deriving from the American Negrito, you know. 
So here's your four classes of Negroes. All right. The American Negro, Asiatic Negro, African Negro, and the Oceanic Negro. In the 1800s, Samuel George Morton broke it down even further, as you can see on the screen, but I don't feel a need to. Divide and conquer is the devil's plan. All of y'all that want to keep dividing to the smallest point when it comes down to people, y'all doing them a favor with the Hegelian dialectic. You dig? Within each class contains subclasses, each with their own unique traits. Just like your high yellow cousin from down the road or your dark brown uncle from around the corner, we are race that varies greatly in skin tone, but they still family. Also understand Africa and America were once connected at the Atlantic coast before the continental divide. So stop spreading hate and let's create strength through love of one another since we family. And remember, anybody who turns their back on their family is worse than scum. You dig? Peace out.